الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له إقرارا به وتوحيدا وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم تسليما مزيدا أما بعد إباد الله ها قد مضى أكثر رمضان My brothers are standing in front of you today and I say that the majority of Ramadan has gone وأقبلنا على الأشر الأواخر and we have the ten days the last ten nights in front of us فكأني وقفت أمامكم أمس بتحديث فضل شهر رمضان والحث في اجتهاد فيه It's like yesterday my brothers that I stood in front of you regarding mentioning the father of Ramadan and the encouragement to do and to strive hard in Ramadan Wallahi it feels like yesterday How fast the days have gone and the nights have gone فهل أحسننا فيما مضى من صلاتنا وقيامنا وقراءتنا وإعطاء الصدقة. So the question is that which has gone and left us from Ramadan. Did we strive in our fasting and in our praying, the recitation of the Quran? The giving in sadaqah to the poor and to the good deeds. Have we done this? Everybody knows his own answer. فهل كنا من المقبلين على أبواب الخير وأفعال البر? Was we from those that did righteous actions, or were we from those individuals that were neglectful? فإن كنت مجتهدا فيما مضى زد اجتهادا. So if you was from those who strove hard of what has gone, then I say increase in what remains in striving. For in that, for indeed that was the sunnah of our messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. وإن كنت وإن كنت من المقصرين في طاعات فبادر إلى الإحسان فيما بقي يغفر لك ما مضى فها هي الأشر الأواخر أمامنا And if you was from those and I address myself for, first from those who fell short who didn't capitalize on the majority of the Ramadan that has left us then turn back to Allah Azza wa Jal and let's strive with what remains because we have in front of us now the blessed 10 days and 10 nights that is coming. Wa fi sahihain an Aisha radiyallahu ta'ala anha qalat kana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam idha dakhala idha dakhala al-ashra shadda mi'zara wa ahya laylahu wa aykadha ahlahu lawdhu lil-Bukhari. In this narration Aisha radiyallahu ta'ala anha the mother of the believers she said that when the last 10 nights would come of Ramadan, then the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would tighten his waistband, his izar. Here meaning that he increased in his ibadah. That he would stand in the night praying and doing righteous acts. And then he would wake his family up at night for them likewise to perform because the amazing virtues that lies in the last 10 nights of Ramadan. And in the riwayah of Imam Muslim, قالت, كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يجتهد في الأشر الأواخر ما لا يجتهد في غيري. And in this narration, she says that he would strive so hard in these last 10 days, not like any other time. There will be an increase in this particular time. So likewise, followers of Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wasallam, 
we should likewise follow that example. Whatever we've done, let's increase as much as we can. Let's wake our families, encourage one another as well, which is from the Sunnah. وفي الصحيحين عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أنه كان يطرق فاطمة وعليا ليلا فيقول لهما ألا تصومان أو أفوا ألا تقام ألا تقومان فتسليان. The Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم would wake his daughter Fatima رضي الله تعالى عنها and her husband and he would say to them Will you not wake and then pray? So let's also wake and pray and invite our families likewise to do the same. A narration which is collected in the Muwatta, Umar ibn Khattab, radiallahu ta'ala, kana yusalli min al-layl, ma sha'an yusalli, hatta idha kana nisf al-layl, ay qadha ahlahu. Fakana yuqul, as-salah, as-salah. In the narration of in what is collected in Muwatta of Imam Malik, Umar ibn Khattab used to pray half the night and then he would wake up his family and then he would say to them, Salah, Salah. So let's be from those who follow these tremendous examples. Kana yushiddu mi'zara regarding him tightening his waistband, then kil ishtihad fil ibadah. It is said that he would strive hard in ibadah وَقِيلْ اِعْتِزَالُهُ لِلنِّسَاءِ And it is also said that he would refrain from having relations with his wives. And that is the most correct based upon the statement وَلَا تُبَاشِرُوهُنَّ وَأَنْتُمْ عَاقِفُونَ فِي الْمَسَاجِدِ And do not have relations with them while you are making the اِتِّقَاف in the masjid. And we all know from the sunnah of the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم and Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha anna nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kana ya'takifu ashra al-awakhir min Ramadan hatta tawaffahu Allahu azza wa jal. Aisha said when the last ten nights used to come, then the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would perform the ittiqaf in the masjid. And while he's in the masjid, that command of Allah, do not have relations. So this is why the ulama say that this is what shidd al-mi'zara means that he used to refrain away from his wives and having relations from them. Does that mean now that in the last 10 nights you cannot have relations? Yes, you can. But this is shiddatul encouragement, encouragement for you to strive and not to waste that night. Because in that night or in those last 10 days, shall we say, is a night that is better than a thousand months. Laylatul Qadr. قال الله عز وجل إن أنزلناه في ليلة القدر. الله سبحانه وتعالى he says that we have revealed it meaning the Quran in ليلة القدر the night of decree. That's what Allah عز وجل has mentioned. وما أدراك ما ليلة القدر. And what will make you know regarding ليلة القدر? ليلة القدر خير من ألف شر. It is a month. It is a month that, or it is a night that is better than a thousand months. So for the one that has wasted his time, then you have this opportunity to seek that night out. A thousand months, if you work it out, is between 82 and 83 years. 82 to 83 years. Whatever is performed in that night of righteousness and good deeds, then it is as if for those, you have done it for all of that period. This is why there is so much emphasis regarding this. And Anas ibn Malik, قال, قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم, هذا شحر قد حضركم وفيه ليلة خير من ألف شر. That this month has come forth in front of you, it is presenting it to you. And it has in there a night which is better than a thousand months. And then listen to what the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went on to say. Man hurimaha faqad hurima khair kullum. Whoever is deprived from that night, then he is deprived of all good. Meaning if you miss out on that night, then there is vast amount of khair that you have missed. 
And then the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he went on to mention, وَلَا يُحْرَمُ خَيْرَهَا إِلَّا مَحْرُومٌ And the one that is deprived of it, that individual is the one that is mahroom. He is deprived due to his own shortcomings. So we pray that Allah Azza wa Jal does not make us from those who's deprived. We pray that Allah Azza wa Jal gives us the tawfiq to stand on that night and catch that night in prayer. فَقَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ مَنْ قَامَ لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّ مِنْ غَمْبِهِ مُتَّفَقٌ عَلَيْهِ أي بُخَارِ وَمُسْلِمْ The Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم, he said, whoever stands in that night praying, you see, just one act of worship, إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا having that belief, certainty with Allah عز وجل, having that iman, Seeking that reward with Allah Azza wa Jal, then his sins will be forgiven. May Allah Azza wa Jal make us from them. Ameen. Aqulu qawli hadha astaghfirullah li wa lakum. Fastaghfiruhu innahu huwa al-ghafur rahim الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. And to continue regarding that blessed night, there are many things that we can do in that night. From them is du'a, from them is giving sadaqa, from them is any a'mal al-khayriya. Teach your families, be gentle, be kind. Teach them some fa'idah from Quran or from Sunnah, anything. Strive as much as you can. And when is that night? When is that night? We do not know. But we have been given guidelines. It is in the last 10 nights, the odd nights. So strive as much as you can. It doesn't definitely mean that it's on the 27th as many perceive to be. Strive on the odd nights. And from the best supplication that you can say, is what is mentioned in this following hadith. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha qalat lin nabiyy sallallahu alayhi wa sallam arayta in waqaftu laylatul qadr ma aqool fiha. She said to the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam knowing about this night and how amazing this night is and the reward that you can get. So she wanted to know what is the best possible thing that she can say in this night. Then the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to her قُولِي اللَّهُمَ إِنَّكَ عَفُوٌ تُحِبُّ الْعَفْوَ فَعْفُ عَنِّي رواه ترمذي وقال حديث حسن صحيح He said to her, say O oh Allah, you are the one who pardons You are the one that loves to pardon, so pardon me So we should increase in mentioning this Allah Azza wa Jalli pardons and he forgives وعن أبي حررة رضي الله تعالى عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لله أتقاع من النار وذلك كل ليلة رواه ترمذي وحسنه شيخ الباني رحم الله. The Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم said that Allah عز وجل frees slaves from the hellfire وذلك كل ليلة and that is every night meaning every night of Ramadan. So on that note. I say to myself first, Al-Fakir wal Maskeen, Al-Ladhi Yaqoom Amamakum, Ya man a'takahu mawlahu min al-nar. O you, who Allah Azza wa Jal may free you from the hellfire. Iyaka an tu'ud ba'da an sirtu hurra illa rikki al-awzaar. Beware, beware, that if Allah has freed you from the hellfire, that you do not return back to the bondage and the slavery of sins. Beware. That Allah Azza wa Jal distance you from the hellfire and then you yourself there on after bring yourself closer to the hellfire. Meaning after Ramadan is finished, we go back to our own same ways. وَإِنْ يُقِذَكَ مِنْهَا وَأَنْ تَتُوكَ نَفْسَ فِيهَا 
that Allah Azza wa Jalla saved you from the hellfire and then you yourself then throw yourself into the hellfire due to your sins. Be wise, be somebody of intellect and ask Allah Azza wa Jal for me and for you that he accepts our deeds and keeps us firm in this month and likewise throughout the year. Malik ibn Dinar, he used to say, Al-Khawf ala al-Amal, an la yutaqabbal ashaddu min al-Amal. That the fear of our actions not being accepted is even far more severe in actually carrying out the action. Because all actions are not easy. Fasting during the day, then coming at night and praying here, then back again for salah. Striving is not easy. But is it accepted with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? This is what we have to strive for that. Ruya and Ali ibn Abi Talib, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, kana yaqul, qunu li kubul al-amal ashaddu ihtimaman minkum min amal. That be strive to make sure and give importance for your action to be accepted with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, more so than the action itself. What does that mean? Meaning perfect your deeds, make it sincere for Allah azza wa jal, make it be in accordance to the sunnah of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Strive whatever you can not to jeopardize that action. And then he would say, Alam tasma'u qawl Allah azza wa jal, inna ma yatakabbal Allahu min al muttaqeen do you not hear the verse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Verily, Allah azza wa jal only accepts it from the muttaqeen. There is a narration that when Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam and his son were building the Kaaba, while they were building the Kaaba, the Kaaba they would be making this dua. Allah yataqabbal minna inna ka sami'u dua. Oh Allah azza wa jal accept it from us. Yet they were commanded from Allah just to show you that it is with Allah Azza wa Jalla if our actions are accepted. On that note, Asallallaha Rabbil Arshaladim and Yajalna Minal Muttaqeen, Wa Yajalna Minal Utaqa Minan Na, Allahumma Taqabal Siyamana Wa Kiyamana, Wa Kulla Makadamna Fiha the Shalal Mubarak, Inna Kasamiul Inna Kasamiul Alim, Wal Akhir Dawana, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Wa Akimus Salah Barakallahu Fikum.